Hey guys, quick note before we start the video. I was so excited that I created this sled jig and you'll see that excitement throughout this video. But it was pointed out to me on Instagram just about an hour ago that there is the Micro Jig 360, which is also very cool and similar, but it requires a lot of specialty hardware and a router table to make. I think you'll find my design is definitely of my own thought uh, and a lot cheaper and easier to make. It only requires one straight bit router pass in one of the steps. So. Let's get into the video. All right, guys, we got a fun one today, and this one actually came to me in a dream. And no, I wasn't having a ballet competition with John Malecki, but I did wake up and immediately draw it because I was like, I can't forget this. And what's amazing about this is it can do so many things, and this fence can be in any position. It's easy to adjust. The T-bolts can enter from a bunch of different places, so uh, it's really easy to set up for all these wild cuts. When you add a stop block like the Cat's Moses stop block, it adds support, and I know when you're cutting those weird angles, it has a tendency to really like want to pull on you and move. So you don't just have to use the hold down clamps, you can too, but it also has movable support that adds repeatability for cuts. So what can this do? Well, I'm just learning all the things, but here's what I've come up with so far. First, it can do really acute rip angles like you always see in modern furniture. It can do really obtuse angles in like a cross cut manner, which is something that other tapered jigs that you buy can't do. Because you have this reference edge, which you know is parallel to your blade, you can use a 12 inch square to set it up as a cross cut sled in a pinch. It could be used as a straight line rip jointing jig. I had a jig like this in my jointing video, not nearly as complex, but you could either use hold down clamps or pinch it up against the fence and use the Cat's Moses stop block as a support mechanism. But basically the sled can do any cut from zero to 180 degrees with complete repeatability and accuracy. So I highly suggest you build one of these. Everything I mentioned will be down in the pinned comment as usual. Let's get started by gluing up our fence. All right, we're gonna cut our body. Remember, you wanna leave a little bit oversized. Uh, we're gonna do ours on the right side of the blade, so we're gonna leave this side uh, a little bit long, because we're gonna trim that off. And that's then gonna become the reference edge for all of the things you do with this jig. We're gonna cut a runner for our miter slot, and we're gonna cut the grooves for our T-track. It's gonna be a grid pattern, you'll see. And then we'll attach our miter slot and trim our edge, and then we'll go ahead and put in our T-track. All right, so you saw me clean off. We got our good edge now, and that's important. You wanna protect that. Don't drop this on that edge, but we're gonna put in our T-Track. Now I'm gonna be using this great T-Track I found, which is one of those rare, really high quality and really cheap T-Track, which I'll link below. But what I love about it is the bottom's really thick and the holes are not only drilled, but countersunk, so you don't have to do any of that. They're really easy to just screw in or you can epoxy them, of course, which is usually what I do, a combination of both. I labeled the front and back just for my reference so that I know where I'm cutting. But what'll be great here is we're gonna cut our dados. I'm gonna use a sled so I'll be able to reference my back edge for my cuts. It doesn't completely matter where they go. I'm gonna go about six inches off of each end. Uh, and then I'm just going to go from the good edge or the, the blade edge, if you will, I'm gonna go six inches in and then probably another six inches or eight inches. I'm gonna look at it here in a minute and lay it out. And if I have plans available, which will be linked below, uh, this will all be in there, what I finalized it with. We're gonna put that in. I'm gonna throw in a dado stack, three quarter inch dado, cut these out, and then we'll get those glued and screwed. All right, now we're gonna turn our attention to the fence. And it is important for this next step that your fence is really square. So we're gonna 
take some extra care to make sure everything's nice and square. We know it's flat because we use that Tamar 3x3 chick with the level, clamping it to a level, which I love doing for sled fences. We actually are going to have our orientation opposite of a crosscut sled where the plies are horizontal. The top and bottom of the fence are going to be the top and bottom of the plywood. And the reason is we're going to route a quarter inch groove pretty much all the way through. Uh, we'll leave some meat on the end so we don't get a ton of flex. And then I'm going to add T-track. But for routing this groove, we're going to pretty much go through the middle here. We'll offset it a little bit to allow room for that T-track. And that's going to give me room for a stop block if we want to do repeated cuts. Like if we have a bunch of leg pieces that have the same angle on them and we need a repeatable place, we're going to do that. I did three sheets of ply, which if you use a Cat's Moses stop block, means your stop block's gonna be a little bit too tall. So when we do that, we're not gonna go all the way as deep as we did into the base of the sled. We're gonna let it sit up a little bit and that'll fix the distance. And the reason I, I did that was three sheets of ply is pretty thick for one quarter inch bit. And the reason we're gonna make it really square right now is we're not gonna be able to route all the way through on one pass. Cause you see, you know, a quarter inch bit, it would go all the way through, but you'd only have maybe an eighth inch in your router call it and that's not safe. So if this thing is really nice and square, it'll be really easy to have our edge guide on one side, flip it end for end and stay on the same side and then our groove should match up. And like I said, I'm gonna give it a little bit of wiggle room so the bolts aren't just like really tough to squeeze through there. It'll also kind of give us some, some uh, oopsie daisy room if uh, our grooves don't exactly match up. So I'm gonna do it once and then bump it over. A after I do both sides, then I'll bump it over just a little bit just to give it a teeny bit of tolerance because those knobs uh, they go on quarter 20 bolts. They have plenty of space and you could even add a washer if you want. So let's get this thing all dialed in and then we're gonna start putting our T-Track in. Before we make this cut, I wanna point out two quick videos for you. We're gonna be using the uh, Astra coated upcut quarter inch bit from Bits and Bits. I did a great video about upcut versus downcut versus compression with great slow motion footage and that will be linked in your upper right hand corner. I also did a two minute Tuesday about this stop collar, which is gonna be really important in this cut, especially because we're not going all the way through, which is why we're using an upcut. We need to clear those chips. But we also don't wanna take a full pass. And this is perfect for not doing full passes and only going a quarter inch at a time. So you should check out both of those videos. They are in the top right hand corner and there'll be a discount code for 15% off these bits as well as everything on their site uh, down in the pinned comment. So let's get to making this cut. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put these in. I'm gonna be using Total Boat's five minute epoxy. That's another company I have a discount code that will be down below in the pinned comment. I wouldn't worry about them being like perfectly, you know, these bolts are pretty easy to move around in there. So you don't really beat yourself up about getting them perfectly aligned. But the one thing you do wanna worry about is if you have a saw stop, you wanna make sure that your T-track isn't all the way at the edge. Cause even if the blade like kind of skims it, that'll set off your brake cartridge. So I actually cut these a little short on purpose just to give myself a little breathing room there. Let's mix up some epoxy and get these things put in. Man, I just got to shoot all the montage stuff for the intro and this thing, it can do a million things and I feel like it's one of those things that it's gonna like come in clutch so many times because it really, the fence could be at any angle and I think when you look at like tapering jigs from Rockler or places like that, they can only do one way and this can go, it can do a cute obtuse, it can do like sort of cross cut where you're, you have the fence this way. It can do rip where you have the fence this way. You know, all those modern furniture angles that are so wild, I think it just, it really can, it can be in any position. The stop block is a phenomenal addition because it adds support. 
to the piece. So when you're cutting in the other position, when the fence is like this, you don't even need a hold down clamp because I, you know, in my experience, when you're doing stuff like that, the piece has a tendency to slide at that really kind of uh, extreme angle. And so with the support of the stop block, it makes it so easy to do. And of course it's repeatable as well, which is awesome. I really love this thing. And you know, my old straight line rip jig that I had that just had two pieces of track that went like this was so valuable. I had two hold down clamps on it. And I use that thing all the time. It was great, especially for like jointing weird shaped boards and things like that. Everything I mentioned, discount codes, parts, uh, free plans will be down below in the pinned comment. And I highly suggest you make this. It's really, really cool. Guys, if you want to support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store, pick up a stop block, an apron or a dovetail jig. Thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop, guys.